Good morning. My name is Melissa, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Infrastructure Management Community Webcast, Making Spectrum Easy to Use. All lines have been placed on the mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. I would now like to turn the call over to Karanda Walker, Director of Product Management. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are. Uh, Thanks so much for for joining this webcast. Uh, this is this is an update uh, for the stuff that we are doing uh, on the spectrum side. Uh, as uh, as always, after the the information, which is the legal side <laughs> that we are expected to show during every presentation. Uh, here's what we'll we'll go through. Uh, we are spending a fair bit of time, the entire team, uh, even we have our engineers now on the community uh, reviewing the content and then helping us out with some of the updates. And, and, and uh, the one-on-one -on -one discussions that I've had with uh, a bunch of customers, uh, what I've realized is not all of them are completely aware or aligned with the process that we follow from a community ideas perspective. So I'll, I'll very quickly breeze through that process. Uh, I'll share some updates uh, on, on what we have done in the last quarter and then what are our plans from a community ideas perspective. And then we'll jump into uh, our, our upcoming release, uh, what we are considering for the release, uh, followed by, of course, the, the exciting uh, demonstration for Spectrum Web Client, the progress that we have made till now, some details around that, and then and uh, Spectrum Sizer, so this is something we are working on to help ease your deployments, along with, again, a live demonstration of that. Uh, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll round this up with uh, reporting manager improvement theme. So this is uh, a sort of a feasibility and, 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 and a project that's going on from a research perspective. Uh, we do have some good, good updates there, and I just wanted to share that with the group because uh, Candidly, you know, SRM is not one of the most loved components within Spectrum, and we genuinely want to uh, do some 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 improvements there. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, communities ideas update, right? So as I said, very quickly, uh, what are we trying to do here uh, from this process is. Uh, we no longer have the, the, the CA enhancement request process. So all our requests come through the community. Uh, so we have a, a, a process in place where our product management team, uh, my team here, they go through the ideas, do the basic operations on that idea and figure out whether it's really a new idea or an idea that we are already delivering on. Uh, post that, what we have is a weekly 60-minute sync-up meeting, uh, so what we call it as an idea review meeting. And we have representation from product management, uh, our engineering teams, both our, our new development teams as well as our sustaining engineering teams, uh, along with our L1 teams and in some cases some of our field teams join as well. And the intent of having a cross-functional discussion on this is to determine whether that idea makes sense from a broad customer uh, 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 impact perspective, uh, to understand whether it's risky or easy to do from an architecture and development perspective, and, and, and uh, obviously last but not the least, whether we have, we see any other customers uh, than the ones who have voted from our support tickets as well. So we, we go through that exercise diligently every week, and then we publish that information for the broader group. And this is sort of a, a flow chart of how that, that, that comes to fruition. The ideas which are accepted by that cross-functional team, uh, and there are a variety of, 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 of uh, different things that we consider before considering an idea. I'll touch upon that. Uh, they get logged into our, our requirement management system. Uh, uh, we used RTC, but uh, since our acquisition of Rally, we'll be moving to Rally, but we do create a, a work item that eventually gets tracked. As I said, uh, for 10.0, these are the ideas that we had implemented. I won't go into detail, details of that. 
for 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 10.1 one uh, these are the ideas which are being considered and you you see here we we have nine ideas and there is there's one more that we could potentially consider you'll see the number of votes while they play a big role uh, uh, in some cases even an idea with a smaller number of votes does get picked up for example the last one uh, support for red hat 7 we have been very uh, very particular about platform support as well as a new device support within spectrum and that's why even if that the number of requests are less we tend to pick them up because the applicability of that particular idea is pretty broad that that particular item is pretty broad so we do we do select some of those ideas as well in some cases specifically this red hat 71 that was anyway on our backlog and that's why we just marked it as uh, uh, as accepted so the more you vote for those ideas obviously the likelihood of that being picked up is very high because uh, we have a huge backlog of ideas around 200 plus uh, the the review team they pick up the ideas which have higher number of votes review them some of them need more time for review than others given complexity of not just the idea proposed but complexity of spectrum as a product in itself so the the, the message i wanted to drive here is we we continue to have a dedicated process for spectrum that many of the other groups uh, within our portfolio are are trying to replicate the process that we have but we will continue to to review this and get key ideas that that make sense uh, at regular interval so you will see that this happening please continue to vote please continue to uh, uh, log your ideas if you have questions do not hesitate to reach out to any of our ca teams this is what we have from the last quarter so last 3 months this is what we have done right so we have delivered 11 ideas uh, planned are 15 and we have 32 ideas which are under review in parallel and what do you mean by under review uh, it means that either our architect is reviewing the technical feasibility and the risk associated it with it or uh, my product managers are looking into it whether the impact of that is really as broad from a customer base perspective as it seems or uh, the engineering teams are looking at the high level size of that idea the cost of that idea from an implementation perspective and as you would expect and imagine that that uh, uh, that the plan the the as you would imagine for a product like spectrum uh, given the complexity and the the different deployment models it times it does take take a little bit more time than than some other ideas now we have tried to be uh, fairly transparent uh, we have said uh, no for things that we don't plan to do uh, we have tried to post regular updates uh, uh, on the community for the ideas we will continue to do that uh, as i said uh, there's a definite dedicated focus on 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 making sure that we are continuing to be transparent uh, with with some of these things uh, what again i i i i uh, uh, probably end this section would be with uh, that request that please please continue to provide your feedback please ask questions uh, as i said we are very open to critique and and if, if if that critique takes us in the right direction we are very 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 open to some of those discussions and comments as well so please continue to uh, uh, do what you are doing uh, I, i i want to definitely make a claim that uh, our, our spectrum community has been a lot more supportive than some of the communities so i we really appreciate that and we would definitely want you to continue that so with that changing gears uh, uh spectrum 101 uh, release content and and uh, you see here planned uh, explicitly called out in the in the in the title slide uh, because as i said as per legal requirements uh, we cannot go into some specific details so uh, this is planned content we are making progress uh, uh, and and then we will 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 we'll share what we are doing so at a high level uh, we had shared some of these things in the past webcasts as well right that uh, after 10.0 uh, which had 64 bit uh, we were looking at okay what would be that next thing that would really solve a pain point for our customers so spectrum web client has been something that we are uh, we had been researching working on from a feasibility perspective uh, i'll go through that in detail i'll show a demonstration uh, as well uh, support for access points and hotspots uh, 
we work with at least half a dozen customers uh, 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 all of them very kind in sharing their thoughts uh, they spent uh, a 60 couple 60 minute sessions with us individually uh, given us some very dedicated feedback i think the solution is coming out very well i think from an end user value perspective uh, while we are not going to demonstrate that here on this call but if you see uh, if you if you if you are interested in trying it out seeing it out please reach out to us our our customer validation or the beta program for 101 starts uh, in another week or so uh supporting and managing uh, sdn nsv uh, network function virtualization again this is coming out pretty well uh, we are now able to show the service chain that's the virtual uh, topology and the mapping of the virtual topology to the underlying physical elements and then driving root cause on top of that so i think it's coming out very well as i said even this one we won't have a a specific demonstration but uh, something that we are very proud of uh the other thing is uh, as i said we are cons- constantly focusing on our platform improvement uh, making the product a lot more secure robust for for customers and one of the things that we are doing is uh, is is implementing uh, a component of apache called more security within spectrum so after 101 uh, uh, implementation in your environment uh your environment would be a lot more secure uh, your your security audit teams would find a lot lesser problems with that deployment because mod security inherently takes care of a lot of uh, potential threats out there because of injections or 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 trojans or or xss which is which is cross right scripting as well so again uh, this is this is pretty much ready uh, we are we are including this as part of our validation as well and then obviously customer voted and uh, community voted enhancements we reviewed that what we intend to do the nine items within within uh, 10.1 and then obviously our bread and butter which is certifications platform updates and so on and so forth so spectrum web client <clears throat> we, 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 we 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 talked about this right our, our theme for this webcast is simplification of spectrum so our goal here was uh, simplify the administrator tasks right so we spent a lot of time managing maneuvering spectrum as a deployment and one of the goals that we had in our mind was customers or or administrators spend a lot of time managing the client systems uh, Uh, be it the jre version compatibility uh, be it the gc unlimited file problem the send files that you need to replace uh, be it be it uh, new patches for the client that they need to go and dip, uh, uh, install on those client systems uh, we have some 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 large environments where people have 500 600 operators for spectrum and managing those 500 600 systems is a big task i know even for smaller environments uh, even if it's a dozen operators dozen uh, clients that in itself is a big task as well so the goal here was what can we do to save <coughs> excuse me administrator time from these routine rote activities and then have them spend time on real setting up their environment for for more business value we started off with that uh, and identified a few key use cases from an l1 operator alignment perspective so our goal was why what, what would a l1 operator need for triaging uh, uh, a a problem in their network environment using spectrum and and we talked one on one to over 30 40 customers we we spent a lot of time on communities and we were able to come to a crisp set of requirements that we are addressing in first version and will will continue to will continue to uh, uh, work through these 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 items in our subsequent releases as well so without further uh, 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 waiting on these slides what i'll do is let me jump into the demonstration uh, okay yeah this is the slide and uh, okay so i went to the size of page okay so uh, are you able to see my uh, okay you are not because i did not uh, share my screen so here you go okay are you able to see now okay awesome cool okay so this is this is what we have for the spectrum uh, web client uh, as i said this is work in progress uh, i would believe that for this iteration uh, first version we have come a long way from what we wanted to do so as i said the goal here was to help the customers rather the l1 operators to help 
solve their problems using the web client itself by the way this is a live qa system uh, with data and then you will see that some of the information is yet to be coded so is that functionality won't work but let me let me talk about the overall layout so what we wanted to show predominantly was the alarm view and then working with the alarm view replicating as much information as possible from the alarm view so you see here right from severity to all the details of that alarm so this view is in sync with your one click the 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 thick client uh, the java client one click and alarms and even alarms getting added and removed from one click get synchronized with this with this tool and I'll, I'll i'll show you that example as well what information do you see on this alarm view uh, that is configurable so the the tables or rather the columns that you would want to see you would it would be completely so you see i'm 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 removing the columns that i don't want to see and and you would be able to see only the ones that you are interested in uh, if i click on default the default ones would show if i click on show all the all the ones would be shown as well uh, this would be a user preference uh, setting as well so we would be we would be saving that particular user's preference here so as i said this view show the details of the alarm uh, if i click on a specific alarm i would see the alarm details and the Im impact as the symptoms as well as the uh, the other details with respect to that so let me select an alarm which has some impact uh, okay okay let me do this Oof. okay so if you see here uh, what we we also have as a dashboard is at the at the right uh, right top uh, right corner we have sort of a health of that entire environment in terms of a dashboard uh, we have reviewed this this work in progress with our internal field team sales teams and a few customers as well and there have been some substantial changes in the way we have laid out this 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 ui because based on the feedback so this this dashboard here uh, at the top is based on the feedback that we got from some of our internal sales teams as well so this this dashboard is for that particular user so the user that you see here uh, i've logged in as a spectrum user the the username is spectrum uh, and and the 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 security policy for that user whatever devices or global collections that user is able to see as per privileges the alarms for that user would be would be collated here or aggregated here from a dashboard perspective these are links you can directly go to these to these links uh, as i said so you you select an alarm uh, you see the, all the details of the alarms uh, in the bottom pane uh, the alarm details uh, which is the probable cause and other things and the impact uh, you would see the details of the impact as well unfortunately i'm not able oh here you go there's one which 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 has some symptoms i wasn't finding one so you would see the impact in detail here as well that what is the impact what are the symptoms and so on and so forth so if you see here we have tried to replicate uh, a, a lot of information that you would see in one click one of the things which is work in progress uh, we still haven't uh, coded that in here is the neighbor topology so for that particular alarm uh the device on which that particular alarm is asserted what is the neighbor topology for that eventually at some point in time we would want to get the complete topology uh, from what we have in spectrum one click into this client as well but as you would imagine that's that's a lot of work uh, to make it like spectrum uh, topology so we were, we are going to start with the immediate neighbor and probably the next two levels of topology and we will continue to beef it up as i said it's empty right now because it's it's not coded yet okay once you have these things uh, uh, for example if you want to search a specific alarm so if i if i want to uh, search something related to cisco so we we have a search capability here where you can search for the device for the alarm for the ip whatever you want you will be able to search on, on that particular uh, item okay why did i type one here okay so for all the juniper devices so you get the ability to to search uh, uh, within that context as well uh, 
locally we have some alarms here so for example if you want to filter by severity filter by type filter by troubleshooter so this, this is some of this is work in progress but for example if you want to see all the alarms of type router cisco you'll be able to you fil select that filter here if you want to see all the alarms where that are assigned to troubleshooter name spectrum which is me which is what i have logged in with so you will be able to have uh, that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, uh, filtering capability on your grid as well. Additionally, as I said, our goal here was to help custom to help ad, uh, operators triage their problems without needing to go to Spectrum one click. So, few of the things that we wanted to help with was okay. So, if there's an if there's an alarm, I select on that alarm and I give the uh, the user the ability to pull that device. So this ping pull trace route would be those triage activities that the end, uh, L1 operator would want to do. Uh, we are still putting the back end code for these. These are placeholders, but when they start working, you will see the result of pull in a pop up window. You will see the result of ping in a pop up window. So for example, something like this. So as I said, this is work in progress. This was an intermittent uh, 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 build that I'm using to show. The other thing that we are getting, and again, this is because of the, the HTML5 frameworks that we are using. For example, you will then be able to save your alarms in the grid. Uh, so for example, you could save it as a CSV, you could save it as an Excel, you could save it as a PDF. So I think very handy without needing to do anything. Uh, you could copy all the alarms in the, in a clipboard. So table copied, and if I, if I, if I just try to paste it on, Okay, instead of uh, I shouldn't be I shouldn't have used Word. I probably should have used uh, Excel. So if I would have done that, it would paste all the alarms which are in the clipboard or on that grid onto your Excel uh, as well. So again, some some handy things uh, would that would help you do a bunch of activities. And then if you want, you could print the alarms uh, uh, in your grid as well. So. So there are a bunch of things that we are, as I said, we are are, are working through to make sure that uh, this is uh, this is uh, a lot more usable, uh, aligned with what some of the newer technologies out there, newer tools talk about. So this is from a layout perspective, right? Uh, now actions from the user for ping pull and doing all that activities. What if a user wants to? manipulate these these alarms so predominantly this information for the l1 operator is read only but for example if i want to acknowledge an alarm right so and i, I acknowledge the alarm you would be able to acknowledge that i unacknowledge that alarm it goes away i unacknowledge i un acknowledge this alarm I, I go away that that acknowledgement goes away if I want to clear an alarm I could do that directly from here and and I'll show you uh, as, as part of the one of the uh, demonstrate uh, in one of the scenarios in the demo that when you clear an alarm here or when you uh, make some changes it gets synchronized back with one click as well you could assign an operator so assign a troubleshooter uh, it shows you all the available users uh, uh, on that particular uh, system and you could assign it to one of those. So for example, if I assign it to E4, uh, not a very friendly name, but the troubleshooter gets assigned and you will see on one click that the troubleshooter has been got assigned uh, as well. So just, just to make this a bit uh, simpler, so uh, let me let me do this. Uh, what, what we'll do is uh, let me go to a particular landscape and I'll, I'll cover this left hand uh, pane as well all the capabilities that we have but for now just to show the synchronization part I am selecting the alarms from uh, the landscape uh, this uh, RH7 VM5 so it will be then easier for me to show that so uh, within this uh, for example we have an alarm for uh, chassis down right okay so there's a chassis down alarm on this device which is 9615 so let me let me search for an alarm which is on this landscape uh, which is an chassis down okay it's saying it pro it's processing okay okay it's saying it's processing so Okay, this this this. So I'm being told that this this build is not working, which is fine. Okay, so let me just re re get those alarms. So I do see this chassis alarm. Is this the same one, 9629? I guess not. Uh, 96. 
29. There you go. Okay. This chassis down alarm. So the IP address is 9629. It's the chassis down alarm. And uh, it's 9629. It's the chassis down alarm. So what I'm going to do on this alarm is uh, you saw there there was no no acknowledgement, no uh, troubleshooter assigned. So I'm going to acknowledge this uh, and I'm going to assign a troubleshooter to this, which is for example, say spectrum again to make it easy. So if you go back to that alarm, you will see within 30 seconds that the alarm has been acknowledged and the assignment would be changed to spectrum. So what 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 we synchronize is at a 30 second interval so that if you see here, yeah, so spectrum, uh, the assignment for the user and the assignment for the uh, the acknowledgement came back as well and if i if i use one click to say for example unacknowledge uh, you would see the same again within 30 seconds uh, on this screen as well so essentially the point through this through this use case i was trying to show was uh, the one click and this web client is completely synchronized from these actions perspective. We have a ticket details here, so if, if the if there is a corresponding service desk ticket, you would get a direct link here, and you could click on that and work through that. And you see here the acknowledgement has gone. So this is, as I said, the high level functionality. Uh, we have put in some filters here in the left pane. Uh, you see here, you could see all the alarms, uh, which is like the default view. Uh, we have given the ability to help triage faster that you'll see the alarms for last two hours, last four hours, last 12 hours, 24 hours, and so on and so forth. So you could do that as well. Uh, we have given the ability to see all your global collections, and then based on some of our internal feedback as well as some of the customers that we've shown this to, we are now getting the hierarchy of global collections into this as well. So you'll be seeing all the, for example, the Juniper alarms or whatever global collections you have, you would be seeing alarms for that particular global collection. I talked about landscapes. Uh, we, we give you the ability to select one or more landscapes that are defined in your environment. And then uh, this was another uh, uh, feedback that we had got from our customers that uh, some of the customers we talked to again that uh, we need to have all the alarm filters shown as well. So you will be able to see the alarm filters that you have defined and then you will be able to see the alarms corresponding to those alarm filters as well. A few key things, uh, uh, not sure, uh, not cosmetic, but, but interesting probably, <laughs> that uh, you could make use of this real estate uh, in a very good way. So you could make these changes. Uh, uh, we, we will be giving ability, this is more for our, our partners and providers uh, where you can replace uh, the CS Spectrum name, logo with your own name and your own logo. Uh, we'll give the ability to change uh, the, the user preference from a, uh, a photograph uh, and any details you would want to put in for that particular user. Uh, uh, we don't have uh, that enabled yet. I'll probably show it in this view because this build, uh, it, it shows that. So we will be giving a lot of uh, uh, user settings here. And again, these are generic settings. Uh, don't don't look at that at this point in time. But this is where you will be able to set what view would you want as default, what global collection you would want to see when you launch uh, this web client. So the, 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 the settings that you would want for that view, you would be, you would be able to see that uh, in that preference view. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, uh, we wanted this to be compliant with a handheld device as well. And that's why you see we don't have a right click, uh, we don't have a right click menu option here. So, and the reason for that is if we minimize this screen here, uh, you will see here that uh, the tool automatically adjusts the columns there and all the information that is not visible, it gets shown in this view here. So I think we are, we are leveraging some of these technologies so that when we are working on uh, handheld devices, uh, the, the view doesn't change and you don't need to rewrite and maintain that separate view. So that's where we are. As I said, a lot of work needs to be done. Uh, uh, one thing that we are going to do different uh, with this particular uh, uh, 
uh, piece from a validation perspective is we are working with our IT team, with our GIS, and we intend to put this uh, this this web client uh, in our DMZ uh, and then expose the link to the community, at least uh, a large part of the community, where without installing anything, you can directly access this from our CI environment, try out, and give us some feedback. So that's that's something different. We are trying with this. That's still work in progress, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll get back to you probably in the next couple of weeks uh, with the details of how to access this when this comes to fruition. So with that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm I'm, I'm going to pause uh, pause for a while and uh, see if there are any questions, comments before I go to the uh, uh, to do go to the next piece in my demonstration. And I see already there are a bunch of questions here. Okay, so let me let me let me take some of these questions uh, before I jump uh, on, so that I still am in context. So. Uh, I hear music. Is this going to be recorded? Uh, okay. Uh, so the first yeah. question I think we have is from Ben Breland. Um, he says, off topic, but where is the best place to find the end of life, end of support dates for earlier versions of Spectrum? Uh, the CA support website would have that information. Uh, uh, if, if you don't, we'll, we'll make sure uh, uh, our SDNs uh, uh, point that out on the community again, or we'll point that out on the community again. But the best place, uh, if, you, if you don't find on the support uh, site, would be to reach out to your local uh, CA contact. But that information is there for sure. Okay. Uh, Okay, the Stuart asks, uh, hey Stuart, long time. So, uh, are the alarms in the web client restricted only to devices the current user has permissions to see? I, I, I see Nagesh has already answered. I'm sorry, Nagesh, I didn't see you answer that. Okay. Uh, okay isn't there an idea? I'm sorry. I'll go yeah. down to the next one that hasn't been answered yet. Um, okay. Stephen Schroeder asks, how about emailing alarms? How, uh, can you, sorry? What was the question? Uh, yeah, how about emailing alarms? I think it was in response. To yes, that. yes. So, so that is we, we have it on our list. Uh, we believe that would be uh, simpler to do. So, we definitely have it on our list. We we haven't we haven't uh, come to doing that yet, Steve. But but that's definitely on our list. Yes. Okay. Um, and so the next one would be from David Vaughn. He asks. Um, when you're adding multiple items in the type and troubleshooters, will you have the ability to configure them as an OR? Sure, sure. So, so, so when when you say so, you mean from a filter perspective, right? Yes. So some of the filters are mutually exclusive. Some of the filters uh, would be OR. So we will document that very well, uh, uh, David. So I, I definitely see your point. So. Uh, I, I see Nagesh, you said it's it's and, but uh, it's not necessary in all the cases. For example, uh, if you if you select uh, all the alarms, or for example, if you select a specific global collection, uh, then uh, the landscape would get disabled because I mean. Uh, the global collection and landscape together might not work in some specific uh, scenarios, right? So yes, there would be there would be some scenarios where it would be a or it would be a and, and in some cases it would be a mutually exclusive. So uh, we are we are uh, that would be the case depending on the kind of um, filter or attribute you're you're looking at, and we are intending to document that uh, pretty uh, well. So we, we should be fine. Okay, great. Uh, next question is from Fred Rucho. Is there a way to see the devices in maintenance? Yes. So we, we, we do have, and at this point in time, uh, 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 there is, uh, okay, and, and I, I unshared it, but yes, you would be able to see uh, uh, devices in maintenance mode uh, as well. So I think that's something uh, we, are, we are working on, yeah. Okay. Um, next is from Stephen Shooks. He asks, uh, do you have a top topology view? Yes, and as I said, that was the neighbor's view, uh, Steve. And, and now I got uh, uh, to the to the right question where which hasn't been answered. But yeah, so there will be a topology view eventually, Stephen. Uh, but but uh, not necessarily uh, immediately in the first iteration. In the first iteration, we are looking at the immediate neighbor's view, and then in I will beef that up in the subsequent releases. So it would take us at least a few iterations to get to the level that we have uh, on the on the. View we have to the levels we have on uh, on one click per se. So I think it will take a bit of time. Yeah, but but definitely on the plans. 
the next one uh, is from loot uh, hey loot uh, how are you okay so will custom scripts custom privileges and custom attributes be available in the web client uh, yes yes and yes eventually so we are looking at custom scripts aggressively because everyone including our internal pre sales folks as well as the external customers we talked to brought up this point of ability to run some custom action on the alarm itself so we we are definitely very aggressively looking at this uh, will it be there in the first iteration uh, i'm not sure we want to but i think it it, it is some work so we are still working through that so uh, definitely we want to get a lot of that customization in there uh, but at this point in time the when part is something we are still working out uh, uh, whether it will be there absolutely uh, mathias uh, hey mathias uh, is there a long term plan to allow customization of web ui similar to how we yes so as i said uh, we we definitely intend to to have that sort of a customization we want to make sure that we give the ability to see your custom attributes your custom uh, stuff in there so we want to make sure that we are able to do that as i said uh, when we do that we are still working through our prioritization mathias so thanks for that input that helps us prioritize the backlog appropriately a uh, ben asks uh, uh, off topic what is the best place to find okay so we talked about that uh, so, simon uh, oh hey simon yeah so i think we've got a whole bunch of questions in here right now um i think it might be best to move on to the rest of the presentation and we can always yes. get to these at the end if there's more time Absolutely. i just want to i got carried away yeah i i got carried away <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay so let me let me get to the next part of uh, the presentation right size so this is not part of a release or it's not a feature uh, capability within the product itself but again aligned with our theme of what can we do to make things easier for uh, customers easier for users and with with a vested interest in there with a selfish interest in there that if we give out some of these things easily uh, are 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 the questions that we get uh, through support for these would be lot lesser so it would be like saving time for both users as well as for our our customer facing teams with some of these things so with that in mind we have an online calculator so we had in the past we had to pull it down what we are doing is uh, we would have this calculator or sizer if you will on the ca support website opened up on lines of what for example the performance management sizer has today so it would be opened up uh, it will have all the key capabilities uh, you'll, have, you'll be able to create your accounts you'll be able to have a lot of different scenarios in there uh, consider the kind of devices you have today for management and then uh, try to uh, put in the aspect of uh, future capacity that okay while i'm sizing it now i expect that in the next 12 to 18 months my capacity is going to increase by x percent how do i account for that and and what should be my plans for that so this tool would help you do that now how would it help you do that let me just show that through a quick demonstration again uh, and i'm conscious of time so this will be quick um Uh, no okay so i need to show google chrome and uh, so it, it, so you are able to see okay cool thanks mangesh okay so this is the sizer right so when you launch the sizer and and please ignore the current link there because this is an internal link uh, it will be eventually on support site as well so when you come to the sizer this is what you will be able to see uh, uh, as a first time user uh, you would register yourself uh, uh you'd put in all these details click okay and then you would get an email back from our our sizer support team that your user uh, name credentials have been verified uh, after which you can then log in so just from a demonstration perspective let me log in with uh, uh with a user name okay so let me use uh no no okay this not okay did i forget what i had created <laughs> Okay so this is what this is what uh, it would get me to so because this is the first time I'm 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 getting into this uh, tool as a user it would allow me to get to sizing now if you see here there are two things here right uh, first let me talk about recall sizing so essentially uh, essentially uh, what we are doing is if you have already used the tool uh, and then if you have saved the sizing the tool would 
have that in his database and you would be able to recall that so these are the different ways uh, uh, of getting that and the intent so you want the recall the sizing for spectrum uh, for just seeing it or, or or editing that with some additional information or do a bunch of other things so this will this will help you do from a overall all, all sizing perspective so for example in this case uh, their account uh, was used for doing sizing for this and this is the saved sizing for that particular environment right that that uh, that uh, that I had created for and then saved in the system which talks about a thousand of these devices and what is the spectro server sizing and the sizing after growth so this is I have recalled the sizing uh, that I had done in the past now if I want to go to uh, and start uh, the new sizing right so in this case it asks me uh, uh, for example uh, uh, a few key things so for example let me start off with the key account and then let me say the new account is community demo and then uh, the account is for uh, this okay so if, if I would have selected current account it would have asked me that uh, then it asks for whether it's a new or whatever the case might be again uh, so I'll say the note is your demo again and uh, it allows you to do a sizing for 9x or 10x so we have added logic for 10x as well so let me let me quickly go through what we could do for 9 so what I'll run you through is uh, to prove a point as well we'll do a sizing with 9x and use the same numbers and do sizing with 10x and 10x should show uh, hopefully a lot lesser resources needed so uh, okay new account name I added a hyphen over smart okay uh, okay so I get here so it asks it asks you what are the percentage of devices that you would expect so I said that okay 75% uh, of me are going to be SNMP 25% uh, would be in SDM SDC environment and I expect the future growth to be 75% so in the next 12 18 months I expect my devices to grow 75% please remember these numbers 75 25 75 it then asks you what platforms do you want to use for that so for example let me use Solaris 11 uh, Spark and then uh, uh, Windows. Uh, uh, let me use 2012 just because I tried that <laughs> here. So okay. So what we then ask you is, you have a bunch of devices. What are those types of devices? So for example, let me say uh, I have uh, routers uh, uh, which are say 4,000 uh, in number. Uh, I have. Uh, uh, what say uh, for example a gen SNMP device which is again uh, 4000 in number and then let me pick up a what what should I pick uh, a host say let me say a host which is say 2000 let's make it 10,000 devices so I have these two uh, I go to next so this is my distribution 75% SNMP 25% SDM SDC uh, and 4 4000 of each so it says it asks me the number of interfaces because spectrum monitoring depends on that right so let me say that my switches and routers are all advanced with 100 uh, interfaces uh, and then uh, let me just have two interfaces for my servers I go next uh, it tells you these are the things you did so basically it also gives you uh, the the link to the page where if you want to go back and make any changes or review you could do that and then once you click finish it will show you this is your sizing so it says that this is your quantity uh, this is the sizing for 9.2 that you would need six servers based on the information that you provided and after 75 percent growth you would need 10 Solaris or and 11 uh, uh, Intel system so this is this is what the sizing has come to for 9.2 uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pause for questions let me go back and 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 or probably do it in a different uh, page so that we can come back and compare this so let me do again new sizing uh, as I said uh, uh, current should I use okay so I'll use community demo current account demo right we did that and then let's just say demo 2 uh, and I use now 10x remember you see please note we are using 10x here and I'll click in I'll, I'll punch in the exact same number 75% SNMP okay this is good with Chrome okay and then 75 percent here uh, growth and then I go back I, I had selected Sun Solaris 11 and I had selected Windows 2012 you see here I mean for a client uh, for the info here you see all our 64 bit uh, operating systems here for 10.0 and then we had again said here that the quantity here is 4000 4000 uh, and we didn't auto complete okay it did okay and this is 2000 
and I didn't, I didn't select. Okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. Okay, and and I I say next. Uh, it shows me uh, the interfaces. We had put hundred here. We had put hundred here and two here, which is fine. And I click next again. It shows me the same summary screen, and then I go and see the system. So if you see here. Uh, in in our earlier environment it was showing 6 uh, uh here is showing 3 and with future growth is showing 5 6 so remember uh, uh this is again uh, the logic on this the optimization is work in progress uh the sizer is a bit conservative we would want to make sure that we are being a bit conservative with these recommendations so that people don't run into issues but we are continuing to uh, uh make the logic back end logic a lot more intelligent so that we are able to address uh, some of the scale issues that people have and be a bit more uh, aggressive and realistic about that so this is this is work in progress so i just wanted to show that to you uh, if you want more information on what to do uh, you would be taking to the sizer guide which takes you to the ca wiki page about the uh, about the sizer documentation if you have some questions or feedback you can just email that using uh, this link uh, you can email the last sizing you can do a bunch of things you could even uh, email the current sizing as well so Again, overall, as I said, a, a, a step forward for us to 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 show some of these these uh, things to you, so that it makes your life as a as an implementation person or an administrator when you're sizing things a bit easier. Uh, I won't pause this time uh, for the questions. Just hold on for one second. Uh, the next thing is SRM improvements, right? And and, and as I said. Uh, aligning with our team uh, we want to simplify reporting so one of the uh, not so loved components within spectrum we know that we understand that we acknowledge that so what what we were trying to do is what can we do to help customers uh, with this with this reporting issue so one of the things and i have updated this on the communities uh, as well is we are looking at an option to let customers completely remove cavi so uh, because cabby is one of the uh, reasons that customers uh, hate is probably a too strong word but people don't like srm to 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 that extent so our our plan there is and remember this is being considered this this research in progress we are aggressively looking at this but the thing that we are trying to do is publish the spectrum's srm schema uh, and document the schema so uh, uh, people can understand how to pull reports from from mysql where spectrum reporting data is stored so our goal there is we expose the schema we provide documentation we provide sample queries so using that you can collect data with 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 whatever uh, information or or knowledge or expertise you have about databases you could use your sql expertise pull the data and push it into any reporting platform you want no need to rely on cabi or boxy that we ship out of the box so that's something we are aggressively looking at as i said i don't have a timeline at this point in time but we want to do something very quickly so uh, as i said goal is we give you the data we give you the schema we give you some sample queries we give you some sample programs of pulling the data and then 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 do that the other thing is as 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 a vendor as ca uh, our our coe our center of excellence for reporting uh, is gravitating towards jasper soft as a tool and we are evaluating whether we could instead of of cabi boxy use jasper soft for our reporting that's that's still work in progress uh, and and while i pause for for some some questions and suggestions uh, i just wanted to share some some progress that we are doing from a research perspective you see here right so for example what we are expecting from a end user workflow is once we publish the schema once we publish the documentation uh, you would you would use those queries uh, in 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 your own tools i have highlighted some of the queries uh, in in the first screenshot you could then use that in one of your 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 programs uh, it could be a script it could be a java application and then use that script to pull that data and if you see here at the bottom uh, we have a report very easily done uh, using some of these customizations so uh, are we ready to publish anything to you yet uh, i'm not i think it will take a little bit of time but what we are hoping to do is uh, give you a flavor solicit some feedback whether you think 
this approach will help you get over some of the the impediments you see with respect to reporting or do you want us to take a different approach altogether so that's that's more of an open uh, question uh, for for you all and i'll come back and uh, to that question but before that let me turn over to jeremy to create a bit more excitement uh, around this Excellent. Thank you, Karen. Uh, folks, real quick, I just want to take 30 seconds. Once again, my name is Jeremy Rossbeck with CA, and I'm uh, product marketing support uh, for CA Spectrum as well as some other products at CA. But just to give you guys a quick glance at what we have going on at CA World this year for Spectrum, you can see uh, a lot of sessions going on, whether they on multiple hands-on labs, uh, pre-education conference courses you can sign up for, and so far, uh, three great customer case studies um, from BNSF Railway, Comcast, and uh, Schlumberger. So great examples of uh, large-scale, um, uh, very large enterprise customers using CA Spectrum today with great, great success supporting their customers, supporting the customer experience. So please go to CA World site. It's very easy. Just uh, hit the agenda on the left and session catalog and just type in uh, CA Spectrum to see all these great sessions that you can sign up for. And we hope to see you at CA World this year. So I think we're ready for questions, right, Karen? Absolutely. And, and, and while we, we get on the, uh, the audio questions, let me uh, uh, go through the questions on the Q&A uh, roster very quickly. And uh, I, I definitely will try to cover most of those. So, okay, so we were at Simon's question. Hey, Simon, so are there any plans to make the host configuration pane available within web client? Uh, we didn't have at this point in time, Simon, but we'll add this to, to your list. Uh, and your second question is also any plans to make Telnet uh, SSH available as a diagnostic tool? Absolutely, yes. So we definitely want to do that. As I said, it's when part that we're still we're going back and forth on. Uh, uh, Michael asked, uh, hey, Michael, uh, is there a place to click on reset SNMP v3 authentication? Uh, I completely do not understand that, but we'll, we'll get back to you uh, on that uh, for details on what you meant by that question. Uh, Ankur uh, asks, any ETA on release of 10.1? Uh, as I said, legally we are not allowed to say that. I will say uh, we are planning to release it in second half of 2015. So in this half of this calendar year, we are considering this to be released. So the dates could change uh, based on our resourcing, but that's what we are currently looking at. Uh, Stuart asks, uh, if I wanted to use uh, quick links to show critical and major alarms, will clicking the second clear, will clicking the second Clear the first. Uh, I did not understand that, uh, Stuart. So, uh, what do you mean by clicking the second? Clear the first. So, uh, I'll, I'll let you probably comment on that through through audio. But Ray asks, uh, Hey Ray, uh, does the web client have drill down capabilities to eHealth and UI? So, by drill down, you mean launch in context? Yes, we intend to give that capability to launch in context to eHealth, UIM, performance manager, and so on and 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 so forth. Uh, uh, Ali Abbas asks, uh, would user management uh, be also available with web client? Uh, no, Ali. Uh, so because user management would be an administrative task. So at this point in time, uh, given the web client is targeted for L1 operators, non-administrative operators, at this point in time, we are not considering that. Uh, Marco asks, are there any plans to extend the web client to not only be used as an alarm console, uh, but also have the ability to search for devices and their details, such as information table, uh, sorry, interface table and asset information. Uh, yes, so we, we do want to extend that information as well, Marco. So uh, that is on our list, some additional detailed information. Uh, we are working through that. But absolutely, we, we, we do want to get that additional information as well. Uh, Kurt asks, uh, will you be able to get service dashboard to web client? Uh, currently, we didn't have any plans for that, but Kurt, I'll definitely add it to our list. We didn't even think about service dashboard yet, but we will definitely add it to our list. Uh, Randy asks, uh, will you be able to produce GIS view for read-only users? Uh, that is our plan. We want to use the web client, uh, and, and our team is definitely thinking in that direction. So we will we'll definitely do that. Uh, Christina asks, regarding the columns appearing in the web view, is the location field uh, uh, a column by default? Uh, can we have an alarm-specific notes field? 
uh the first part uh the location part i'm not sure whether it's already uh, in there but we could add that uh, very easily because if it's an attribute in there adding that as a column in 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 the web client wouldn't be that much big of a deal but uh, I'll, I'll add this to our list christina and I'll make sure we have that and can we have an alarm specific notes field uh I think that might be a spectrum enhancement, not just a web client enhancement, right? So I think we'll 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 we'll, we'll add it to our list as well. Uh, Stephen asks, uh, or rather comments, and I will make this comment or read this comment. This is looking great. I think CA is finally getting this uh, right. Java has caused so many issues. We are we are with you, Stephen, and and thanks for the confirmation. So uh, Skip asks, uh, Hey Skip, will there be a GIS view for operators? I already answered that. Yes, we do intend to do that. Ankur asks, uh, Since CA bundles a lot of tools together under service assurance, what about web views for SOI? Uh, uh, we are trying to get that at the portfolio level, Ankur. So we will keep you posted. So we definitely intend to make that seamless across our portfolio. Uh, but as you would expect, that would need a bit of work. But we'll get back to you. Uh, Fred asks, can global collections be created via web client? No, because that would be a, an administrative task, not an operator task. Uh, David asks, hey David, uh, will you make uh, the web client HTTPS by default? That is our plan. That is our thought process. We want to do that. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll get back to you once we are at that point. Ankur again asks, will device information views be available in WebView? We intend and plan to do that, but probably not in the first iteration. Uh, Manuel asks, can the WebView table be modified with specific attributes? Yes, so you saw that you, you will be able to have configuration to decide what you see and what you don't see. Uh, Stuart says, can you explain those three numbers mean? Okay. Uh, uh, so three numbers were the major alarms, critical alarms, and minor alarms seen in that, the number of those alarms seen in that environment for that particular user steward. So essentially, that numbers will keep changing based on the alarms getting added or removed from the console. Uh, Sizer says SNMP v3 managed. Uh, does it also include SNMP v2? Yes, Al, it, it does. Uh, uh, Eric says simple cabby. Yes, Eric, uh, you you are one of those proponents for for the product, and, and we absolutely appreciate uh, all the inputs that you gave, all the support that you gave. So absolutely, we are going to do uh, a lot of those things based on the support and help that we get from you as well. Uh, Paul asks, uh, need to include a, a cabby yes or no in the sizing tool? Absolutely, that's a good point. I think I'll make a note of that. We need to add a cabby from a sizing perspective as well. And I'm conscious I just have one more minute, but I'll still try to go as fast as I can. Uh, uh, Kiran, let's arrange a WebEx together. Absolutely, we could do that. Christopher Benton asks, thanks for the improvement. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joe asks, nice improvements. Uh, can you share where things stand with the community's idea title? I will, I will. I'll definitely send out an update during my next community uh, blog. Uh, so we, we have a status on that. We will definitely do that. John asks, uh, asks, I joined a bit late and have been mentioned. Are these enhancements in 10 or will be the, in these future hotfixes? These will be in Spectrum 10.1 that we intend to release uh, as the next Spectrum release. Uh, flexible maintenance mode, Joe asks, uh, flexible maintenance mode schedules, score 47. Okay, we'll get back to you, Joe. We'll, we'll, we'll review that. I'm pretty sure that is under review by our team. Uh, uh, Stephen asks, will you be able to see NCM, uh, use NCM through web UI? No, but you would be able to see NCM uh, alarms using the web uh, UI. Al asks, uh, web interface, we use option to write alarm state status to show the information about alarm. Uh, will that be available from web? Uh, at this point, no, Al, and I didn't have this use case in my list, but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely add this and see uh, way, uh, uh, what we can do with that. Uh, Stuart asks, in the web UI, uh, there are three buttons to the top left. Uh, does clicking uh, one clear? Oh, yes. They, in some cases, there might, they might be mutually exclusive, uh, 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 Stuart. Uh, in some cases, they might not. I will, I'll send you the documentation around that. Uh, will WebView have the events tab, Ankur? No, it will not. It's restricted to alarms at this point in time. Fred asks, will scheduling maintenance on active alarms be available to the web client? Uh, no, uh, because that's an administrative task, Fred, and we are targeting only L1 task. Benjamin asks, I saw a chat function in the menu of bar of the web interface. Can you say somewhere? No. So that's, that's probably one of the templates that we're using. There's no chat functionality, Benjamin. So no. Uh, 
the GIS view needs Stuart asks, GIS view needs the ability to show containers and devices, not just containers. Uh, yes, we are, we are working on that, Stuart. We, we have that in our list. We are definitely working on that based on the feedback that we have given in the past. Uh, Christina asks, will the CSV save the filters in effect and the selected columns, or will you just get all the filters and all the columns? I don't know that. So, Christina, I'll get back to you with that response. I believe it is everything in the grid, not as per the filters. But, but I think once you get it in Excel or CSV, you can put in whatever filters you want. But I'll, I'll get a confirmation for that uh, with you on that. And then Michael asks, in the web client, will we be able to reset uh, SNMP v3 authentication? I don't think so, uh, Michael, because that would again be a, a administrative operation. Lute asks, will there be a separate beta to sign up for SRM improvements? Uh, there will be loose, uh, loot, so I'll reach out to the community when we do have that, so I'll definitely do that. Uh, thanks for the improvement, out Java, thank you. Okay, so we're done with questions. Anything in the audio? I know we are, we are, we are uh, one minute over time, but any questions on audio? We do have a question from the line of Randy Ryder. Okay, hey Randy. Uh, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Okay. I, I'm sorry, uh, you answered my question. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> nice hearing you, Randy. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, if there are no more questions, I know we are a minute over. Let me let me pass it on to Melanie. Melanie, uh, you want to have any uh, last comments? Thank you. Um, yes, we'll be uh, putting out a poll right now uh, asking you guys to rate the effectiveness of today's webcast topic. We encourage you to please go out and answer that. Uh, your feedback really does help us to plan future webcasts. And we just want to thank everyone for joining today. It was a great session. Thank you so much, Karen, and thank you, Jeremy. And everyone, have a great day, and we'll see you out in the community. Thank you for joining today's conference call. You may now disconnect your lines.